Hello everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion and we'll be taking a look at the MSI Z87 G43 motherboard. This motherboard is part of the MSI Classic Series for the Z87 motherboards. Basically you could call it a budget board or something that maybe system integrators might like. Why do I say that? It has three legacy PCI slots. So if you have a RAID card that's PCI or something else that's PCI, like a sound card, you'll be able to utilize those extra PCI slots for it. Now, personally, I haven't used a PCI card in I don't remember how many years. But in any case, let's talk a little bit about the board itself. Now, as a budget board, of course, you're going to get a great price. It's only $119 manufacturer suggested retail price. I have seen it for less, so that's a good thing. The other thing you're going to get with this board is Military Class 4, something that you might not see on other manufacturers' boards. Now, if you're familiar with MSI, you know that they use Military Class products. Everything is certified, etc. So, that you might expect with their higher-end boards, but you're, all, you're going to get this with this board also. You're also going to get their software, Command Center, and you're going to get RAM disk something that other manufacturers don't give you unless you're buying an upper-end board. So you don't have to pay for this. This is free software and you could use it. So if you're looking to maybe get a little bit more out of, out of your system, you could use that and you won't have to pay for it. All right. In any case, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the board and then we'll come back and I'll give you my conclusion. start by taking a look at the motherboard box first. As you can see on the motherboard box, it says Z87 G43, of course, clearly. And also, it does have military class 4. And this is something you might not find on lower end boards or budget boards as this one is with other manufacturers. They don't put all the good stuff into their boards. Of course, it's made for the fourth generation core series processors from Intel, that would be Haswell. This is a Series 8 chipset. It's the Z87 chipset. And if we look at the box, you'll notice that it supports three display outputs. Also, it's PCIe Gen 3. It's got Click BIOS 4 and Super RAID. Of course, with Military Class 4, you're going to get humidity protection, high temperature protection, EMI and ESD protection. On the back of the box, as we take a look, basically it's showing that it has, does come with solid caps and also SFC MOF sets. All right. Other than that, OC Genie 4 is available and you do get Command Center. One good thing about this is, unlike other manufacturers again, you're going to get RAM disk software that is for free with this motherboard from MSI. We'll go ahead and look at the contents of the box. And of course that shows an IO plate. We have two SATA 6 connectors. Of course our disc for your drivers. A quick installation guide and also the user guide really doesn't have that much in it again it's a it's a budget board it's built for someone who's on a budget or possibly someone who really needs to have in a sense system integrator etc so let's look at the board okay it's a full-size ATX board as you can see, if you saw the video on the G41 PC Mate, this has a couple beefier heat sinks. It is 6 plus 1 phase change. Of course, it's socket 1150 for the Haswell processor. We have four DIMM slots, and of course, that will accommodate up to 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. When we go around the board, we'll just take a little closer look here. I'll lift it up for you and we'll kind of go around the board. One good thing about this board you'll notice is that you have 
not one, but two CPU fan inputs. So if you have a larger heat sink trying to cool or even a water cooler, a self-contained water cooler, you do have the ability to put two CPU fans on there. When we go down the side of the board, we have our 24 pin connector. We have our USB 3.0 connector. We have two, four, six. That's six SATA 6 connectors on this board. And also, here is another system fan connector. When we go down to the bottom of the board and take a look at that, let's go ahead and take a look at this heat sink first. It's a fairly large heat sink on PCH. And then down below that, of course, we have our front panel USB connectors. We also have our front panel connector for our case. Then we have, of course, TPM. We have the audio, etc. So this is all your connections for your front panel. Also, you have a COM port there. One thing about this board that differs a little bit from the uh, G41 is you have one, two, three PCI, legacy PCI slots. Personally, I don't use them, but if you're a systems builder and you have other stuff that's PCI slots, it gives you the availability to go ahead and just use those. You do also have PCIe X, two PCIe X1 slots and you have two PC, PCI slots. Now, this is Crossfire X certified. It's not SLI certified. This is an X4. This is an X16 here. Then just above that, of course, we have another, CP, uh, another system fan connector. So let's go ahead and look at the I.O. All right. If you're looking at it, you'll notice that this has the full array for sound, other than the, uh, the G41, which only had three ports. This does have all full connections for it. You have two USB 3.0 ports here, and here's for your triple display. You have one VGA, one DVI, and of course your HDMI is here. This is your Realtek LAN. Below that you have two USB 3.0 uh, ports. You have another two here, and of course below the PS2 adapter you have two more USB 2.0 ports. Your 8-pin power connector is right here between the two heat sinks. And again, let's look at the back of the motherboard. And as you can see, basically, we just have our, our plate to connect to your, uh, the socket, and we have screws that connect the, the heat sinks behind. So again, I mean, it's, this is a budget board, but it does have some great features to it. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the uh, test, my test bench, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. Not that bad. As you can see, there's full of, it, the board's full of features. The Z87 G43 doesn't come bare bones. It's not something that you would expect from a $119 board. You got six SATA, SATA six ports. You've got the three PCI legacy ports. You also get, are gonna get Crossfire X with it. Unfortunately, it's not SLI capable. Above the uh, G41, which only had the three ports for the video, you're getting full video out of this one. You're getting all the six ports for your uh, for a 5.1 or a 7.1 system. And you're getting beefier heat sinks on your uh, PWM, or I mean, I'm sorry, the VRM, and of course your PCH. Now, a few things that I actually liked about the board is that it's very convenient when you're using a dual slot video card. The SATA ports do not hide underneath it, so you have access to them. A lot of boards that I've seen and I've reviewed, the SATA ports are right underneath the video card. So if you have a video card in there and you gotta change a SATA cable or something like that, you're not gonna be able to do it. One good quality about this is it's not there. It also has a USB 3.0 that's right below the, uh, 
the 24 pin connector, which I find very helpful. Some other manufacturers put their USB 3.0 headers, you know, for your case at the bottom of the board. And I found that with some of the newer cases, believe it or not, their cables aren't long enough. Yes, fooey on the case makers, but in any case, okay, no pun intended there, but in any case, at least you're gonna be able to connect your USB front panel connector, USB 3.0 front panel connector to it. One thing that I saw about this board that kind of got me is, in the BIOS, in the UEFI BIOS, it did have digital power control. Now, on the G41, you didn't have that accessible to you, but this one you do. But unfortunately, this board, I was only able to get my processor up to 4.5 gigahertz, while on the G41, I actually got 4.6. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to speak with MSI about this. Maybe they need a BIOS update, etc. But I have a feeling that the phase change and the phase switching, etc., is not tuned correctly. Because basically for 4.6 with my processor at 1.255 volts, I'm usually able not to have to change anything at all but the voltage. So I don't have to play with phase change or you know RAM change, etc. Now, does this make this board any worse than the G41? No. Why? It's $119. To get this processor and to get that board when it's really not made for overclocking per se, to get it to 4.5 gigahertz, that's not bad at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give it a gold award. Yes, a gold award. And that's based on its performance. It's also based on its features and its price. So remember everyone, with over a thousand videos uploaded, if you haven't seen it at High Tech Legion, you might not have seen it at all. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. You're watching the video, subscribe to us. We put videos up every day. Our main website is www.hightechlegion.com and that is High Tech, H-I-T-E-C-H, not H-I-G-H. -H. Make sure you like us on Facebook, facebook.com front slash H-T-L reviews and follow us on Twitter, twitter.com front slash high tech legion. All right, everyone, stay thirsty, my friends. We'll see you the next time. Have a great day. Bye bye.